taxes and stuff. Yes. But at the same time, when I have memorized those, I don't think about them as much as I do when I read them. So I mm. think it's good to actually have something different to where I have to read it. And then thinking yes. back on what my mother said or my granddad said in the 20s, 19, 1920s, was we're losing all of the new young members because they're still doing it in German. And yeah. no one's German with <laughs> the new generation. So yes. change, is, change is good. <laughs> change is good. <clears throat> Although, you know how many Lutherans it takes to change a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> we're very we're very set in our ways and i and that's not way. exactly how i was going to say it, but in that's the correct the punchline. the punchline is chain <laughs> that's the old thing well you know if that brings up a lot of thoughts in me margo i i appreciate you sharing that i had a few others including someone sitting next to me here now um who shared similar thoughts i was surprised though that in that entire room four people raised their hands maybe five that preferred the oh. your kingdom come no everybody preferred the the older traditional one and oh, yeah. and i had a couple of other people one one parent came up to me and said pastor bill we teach our kids to memorize something when they're little and they can't read and then we use a different version it, it does it throws them off and you know and so anyway so i got all kinds of great comments about it but yeah. um, i think that it's one of those things that there isn't a right or wrong there's better and pluses and minuses on both sides yeah better what you, and best what yeah better and best because <laughs> i agree margo i i think it's good to know the lord's prayer in more than one form <laughs> i have the newer version memorized even though i think as we'll see because we're going to put some more information on that um, the the newer version is actually the older version. So, <laughs> what's new is was old once, and what's old is new once. So, anyway, but yeah, no, I appreciate that, Margo. Yeah, yeah. I, I think too. It's like with the twenty third Psalm. You know, we like that in the King James. Yes, too. And so musically, I love the old the King James version of the Lord's Prayer. But you know, just for how it sounds to the ears. Yeah. But I think when we can hone in on the language better it's better for our theology yeah right right well and there are theological cons considerations with this lord's prayer so anyway thank you margo for uh, you know connecting us back to last sunday it was a good start <laughs> on our lord's prayer bible study so that's great that's great thank you for sharing those thoughts other people have thoughts on sunday i was thinking of that feeling of comfort mm. and how you know, when you've memorized it, you have that comfort that, you know, you can say this prayer any time of the day, doesn't yeah. matter where you are, if you can remember it. And yeah. that's a comforting thing, especially if you're in a, you know, a situation where, you know, you're kind of panicking and you're thinking, okay, how do I settle myself down? Oh, the Lord's Prayer. Let's just look at the Lord's Prayer sure. and then suddenly say that. That's a comfort yeah. for me, at least. Sure. You know. Yeah, and like Margo, Margo said with the John McCain, you know, I mean, it's important to have things memorized. <laughs> you know, when he was in in concentration or in yeah, Kept prison, yeah. in Vietnam, prison, yeah. he yeah, yeah, yeah. Ross, when the priest would I give also, us. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Margo, and then we'll go to Ross. Oh. Yeah. I also remember when I was in confirmation, the, the pastor made the very direct point is, you know, you don't have to do the exact Lord's Prayer or exact prayer because you can be praying as you're walking down the street and make sure you don't stumble or whatever on the sidewalk, but you can be yeah. in prayer with the Lord all the and time. Absolutely. Pray without ceasing, Paul said. So you can be praying when you're behind the wheel of the car, you know. <laughs> you yeah. better be praying. <laughs> so you keep your eyes open. Right. Yeah. yeah. When, yep. the, when the priest would give you your penance, he'd say, you know, go say 10, 10, 30 oh, penance, say, say 10 Hail Marys. You can get through a you can get through a Hail Mary in under 10 seconds. So I, I think there's a lot, there's a lot to to actually sitting in a reading 
having to read something rather than just yeah, yeah. just oh, say yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So point. so reading, it's like it goes in deeper yeah. It, into yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's true. I think that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Cool. Well, I'm excited about the interest. I'm worried about. I didn't. <laughs> I'm. Um, I forgot that about the men's retreat that I'm gone in two weeks. So <laughs> gotta talk to Kim or uh, um, I what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record my kind of lecture part and then have some discussion and then and then anyway, we'll 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 do that. And then um, I know Ron said he's available too, so now. So anyway, so we'll because in the second couple of Sundays in October, I'm in Maui. So um, for a, bit fun, a vacation, which we've been needing for quite a while. So anyway, but anyway, it'll, it's going to be a great class. So I don't know if I just put things on pause and I don't know, because I don't want to miss it. <laughs> um, I love it. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm excited that full room, full packed house on Sunday. That was cool. Okay, well, here we are at another Sunday in after Pentecost, and we are continuing continuing in the 18th chapter of Matthew, picking right up where we left off last week. Um, the youth are doing, uh, leading the full service musically and doing all the parts, and there's some, some testimonials, so my sermon may be Nothing. I may not preach at all, or as I look at the clock, I may preach for three minutes, or like last week, nine minutes. I was telling folks as they came in, this is the record. <laughs> yes. This is the record. I just want to make people to know that my early service sermon, I think, was less than 10 minutes. So, you know, because I knew we were going to be pressed. We had such great music and all kinds of special things going on. So um, anyway, I'll, if I do do a sermon, it'll be a brief homily, most likely. But there's something that can be said for sure. And this is an amazing text and really powerful. So we're going to launch right into that. We might have time. Um, I know we originally had Romans in there, the second reading, but Jonathan rightly uh, put in the Genesis passage where um, it's the reconciliation of Joseph's brothers, which could be seen as an absolution. Martin Luther saw in that, uh, that like the greatest absolution in the scriptures. Um, others disagree, of course. Uh, of course. So, um, so anyway, that's where we are. Let me open us with a prayer. Share up the screen here with with our text, and oh, you know what? Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's stop the share. Let's see. Let's go here. Let's pin. Oh, come on. Sorry for how I still forget to do stuff. In that at the top, go here and do this. Oh, I got more folks coming in today. Awesome. Hey, Barb. Yay, Barb is here. Thank you. Okay, so do that. Stop, share, share again. Hi, Sharon. Three names. Mm, two waters go on. Two waters. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Okay, now we are ready. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this opportunity to be in your word together. Um, we thank you for our fellowship. We thank you for our community and let your word do its work today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, anybody want to read the parable of the unforgiving servant down to uh, verse, well, the end of the chapter. So, Ross, you got it. 
Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant? Oh, you know what? Go up to 21. Yep. Yeah. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus saith unto him, I say not in, I say not unto you, unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant fell, therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told them unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired, desirest me. Shouldst now thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all it was due unto him. So likewise, my heavenly Father shall do unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. All right. Thank you, King James. King James. <laughs> Ross, you're getting pretty good at that. Yeah, you're getting pretty good. Yeah. and thous in there. Just, just have to remember to switch words around. That's what yeah. it's So that's an interesting example of theology being different, or like the message being different, because King James says 70 times seven. And I mean, like if you if this was a real thing where you really had to say, okay, it's important to do this 77 times. Yeah. Which is, you know. Right, right. And I wonder if there is a difference. Let's see. That makes me want to uh, delve in here to uh, the my apparatus. What verse is that? Oh, come on, uh, Bill. This should be Matthew, not Philippians. Uh, what verse is 22. that? 22, 18, 22. So verse 18, 22. So no, no textual variant there in verse 22 to account for the um, the different, you know, the 70, because uh, yeah, in the, the newer ones, it says 77 times, not, se not seven times 70. Seven. So, so you know, I, on mine, what does it say? It, it says, doesn't say there is a- It says variant. times without number. So that big number meant times without yeah. number. Yeah, it didn't it, it's it's a way of saying without without end. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did yeah. they even have multiplication in King James Day? <laughs> oh yeah. I think they did. Yeah, I think they were doing I forget where they were at. In that, but hey, yeah. if somebody could owe ten thousand talents, they must have yeah. been pretty good at math by then. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you know how much that is worth. They were using the abacus. They were using the abacus. Yeah. There you go. The calculator of the time. Um, yes, Doug, tell us because it's a lot. It, it, it says it's of dollars. Yeah. I think millions. and since that Bible was written, some scholars would say billions today. Yeah, yeah. This was in 1985. Yeah, oh, so right. millions is now billions, right? <laughs> so um yeah, yeah so uh a talent. Is a, isn't a talent like a year? Does your Bible say, does a talent, is a talent like a year long? 20 years. Is what mine says. 20, 20 years wages. Wow. Yeah. So that would be my pension, you know, yeah. <laughs> times 10,000. Yeah. You know what this is like? It's like our country. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> isn't that about what our country's in debt? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, anyway, sorry, that was not yeah. that was not appropriate for me to insert. Whereas the uh, hundred denarii is just a what is what was it a few dollars worth? Yeah, it's again, yeah, again. So so the effect is you know right there. Um, so boy, what do we do with this text? The key, please say yeah. yeah. I I have a question about that last verse. Okay. Because it looks like it's got a condition to it. Yes, um, it does. If you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart, which reminds me of when I was little and my mom was trying to say, you need to forgive your brother, or your sisters. So was like, okay, I forgive you. You know, like <laughs> that was not from the heart. Correct. <laughs> I was doing it because mom said that that's what you know we were supposed to do so what do you think that means from your heart and how does you that you gotta apply? mean it right y from yeah. your heart it's not just lip service yeah that's what i take it to mean you gotta really mean it you gotta it's gotta yeah. be sincere it's so no do people think whether they're sincere or not i mean do they ever say i think i forgive i forgave them from my heart but you know what qualifies from your heart? All right, good question. Well, are you still carrying the grudge around in your mind? Or oh, that's a good one. You still have grudges or bitterness or um, so it's like saying Hail Mary under 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they mean it in 10 seconds. No. <laughs> um, yeah, that I think this is where we're getting at. But now note though, Jesus doesn't just say to forgive mm -hmm. to Peter. But he says, forgive from your heart. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, your heavenly father will not forgive you. Well, that's a scary thought. Is what, yeah. What yeah, that could, saying, huh? yeah. I mean, it's one thing to I say I forgive you. We that maybe that's doable, but to really let it go. Does it mean just forget it? Does that, Does that mean forget it? Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I don't that's think it. that's what forgiveness is because. But but if we go to the 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 just kind of the visual of what forgiveness is, it's loosing, so it's setting something free. So I think forgive means to put it to the side, so it's no longer, you know, like when God forgives us. Uh, what does it say in the Psalms? As far as east is from the west, God removes our sin. So, and at that time, east, as far as east from west, was as big as they could imagine. As as you can go. So, like as far, so it's out of the way. But we, as human beings, we don't have the ability to just forget. You know, the forgive and forget thing. And maybe some, maybe sometimes we shouldn't forget. You know, so yeah, we you would you would want the guy to if he steals twenty bucks from you, you'd want him to okay, and then he steals twenty bucks from you again. I mean, that's right? Just, oh, yeah, that, that yeah sure, that's right. That, that this sure is, is chaos. Is. If we do that, yeah, this is yeah. this is going to be chaos and enabling and horrible, and the whole world's going to tumble. Oh. Kind of like Portland. <laughs> kind of white Portland. Okay, let's just get right to it, Ross. Yeah. Well, we are starting to stumble into an area, big question on this parable. What is Jesus doing with Peter? Let's go back up. What is what what in what way is Peter is does he understand the gospel at this point? I'm going to say no. Just come right out and tell you, I don't think Peter gets it yet. Because what does he ask? Yeah. How many times? Yeah. Now, when you think about how many times, is that a law or gospel question? To me, that's a law question. Yeah. The law is still in force. And how many times do we have to do this? By the time you get to 77, you're going to forget how many times you've done it. So, and so then Jesus tells him, tells him an astronomical thing. Yeah. Now, Peter probably went away figuring, okay, let me figure out how many that is. Let me get the abacus out. 
because Jesus actually is, I think, trying to Peter's thinking. Is Peter still in the law? Because you can have mercy in the law. I mean, uh, I don't know if you listen to Colson, but he, he does a lot on this this week. But you can have mercy in the law. What's mercy in the law? Well, you blew it, but we're going to give you parole. Um, I'm going to let you off this time. There's mercy within the law, but it's always the law is still there. 70 times seven. And then, you know, for him to say to Peter, and this is very much Lord's Prayerish. We've talked about that. And then Margo brought up the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. If I take that as, as in just like I forgive in the same measure that I forgive other people, I'm not sure I want to pray that prayer. I'm telling God to forgive me like I forgive others. God forbid. So what's going on here with this word and what he's saying to Peter is an important question. Because personally, weeping of gnashing of teeth, isn't there some of that going on? Um, he should pay his debt. You know, if God's going to do this to us. He's going to throw us in jail. If we don't forgive our brother or sister from our heart. You guys ready to go away sad? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing the towel at this point? How are you going to handle this in a three to ten minutes? So? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wait, you guys are going to solve this, right? I mean, <laughs> I've given you the tools. I've given you the tools to figure this out. Remember, we always say, is Jesus preaching here the law or the gospel? And remember, well, yeah, go ahead. The Lord wasn't going to forgive that first servant until he asked for forgiveness or asked for, you know, right. please forgive my debt. You don't sell my wife and kids down, down the river. To yeah. So... Well, I, I, you, I think you can you can ask for forgiveness seventy times, seven times. Is that what is that what you say? Oh yeah, like so we just keep committing sins because God's going to keep forgiving. Well, them. and and we do because when you confess yeah. the sins every Sunday, it's the same stuff over and over. Right? Yeah, I even though I fight against a lot of the things I know I do wrong, I end up doing a lot of them same again. Stuff. That maybe one could say that the difference is that. I'm still fighting, even though I still fail, versus, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll just, you know, whatever. one might make a distinction there. But nonetheless, if we follow this, then again, we have chaos. We have people are just, if you're going to forgive them like that, people are just going to be out there doing all kinds of horrible things, right? They already are. They already are. <laughs> Well, and we have these two kingdoms where if we forgive it, you know, in our household, if we forgive a debt like that, what are we doing to our kids and our, you know, our ability to care for community? And... Absolutely. If we apply this to City Hall and to, you know, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a mess. Because you have to be held accountable. What if a history teacher or a math teacher in high school, every time a kid came in and said, well, I forgot my homework or my dog ate my homework. They said, oh, okay, you can have another day. You can have another day. Would any homework ever get turned in? Probably not. What if you someone showed up for a test and, oh, I, did, I had a bad night and I'm just not ready and I didn't forgot to study. Oh, that's okay. You can take it next what if you did that 70 times? You would have chaos. You would have not. So is Kim just brought up one really important concept that there's, especially that, I don't, Lutherans didn't invent this. It's right there. there it's the only way to, in my view, make sense of what the Bible says in many regards, um, that there are two kingdoms. In the civil, 
earthly, worldly, whatever other adjectives you want to use, kingdom, there's it's the kingdom of law. We have rules. You have to drive 60 miles an hour on, on three here. Or, you, or they're going to give you a ticket. No, <laughs> I can't say I've gotten one in many years because I drive 60 now because they're ready there. So, but if we didn't have 60, people would drive 80 and 90. And so our world is the world of law and order. <laughs> um, we have to have that to function as a society. And in that world, there is mercy, but it's not this kind of mercy. You know, you, you know, we got our legal system, which is anything but perfect, you know, but it's maybe the best, I don't say it's the best, but, you know, <laughs> I think it's better than what I've experienced in other countries when it comes to justice, even though as messed up as it is, because it's run by messed up human beings. But nonetheless, we have some mercy in that system, but not this kind of mercy. So Kim brought just brought up one way to come at this is, well, let's make sure we know what kingdom we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the civil kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, you know, um, the how, how you run a education school or city hall. We're talking about the church. Remember in verse chapter 18? We have Jesus mentioning the church now twice before it even comes about. And so, so Peter is thinking that the church is going to work in a what fashion? Law fashion. He doesn't got the two kingdoms yet. He's just saying, well, in the church, aren't we going to function just like the rest of the world? And that's where Jesus goes to come on. And Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this. Correct. Yes. Story. Yes. And Matthew loves to use the term kingdom of heaven versus kingdom of God, but almost same difference. Yes. Yeah. So kingdom of heaven, this other kingdom, not the kingdom of earth. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. And so many times Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is near and he was talking about himself, of course, or what he was bringing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're he was talking about what? What, what, what? what was that comment? He was talking about what? Go ahead, Doug, a little louder. Uh, the, the kingdom of heaven and that Jesus um, often said that the kingdom of heaven is near. And that was he was meaning himself and what he was bringing in his message. Uh, no. OK, thanks. Yeah, thank you. You bet. Thank you. No, thank you, Margo. Thanks for um, so he's saying that. And he, and he goes into this about the uh, the debtors, and he's saying the kingdom of heaven works this way, which isn't the way the law works. Right. Right? Yeah. Because, like you're saying, it doesn't make sense for, um, for someone to get forgiven 70 times 7 or whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. Or, yeah. you know, the millions of dollars that they owe. Yeah. Yeah. But, you no. Know, in the kingdom of heaven it's different so there is a difference now we're yeah go ahead Kim. well and so like you said in matthew lots most of the time when he says kingdom of heaven he's talking about himself yeah so he's saying this is the way i work yes love it love it but the lord is also telling us to be responsible he's telling us to to, to not not try to to uh to follow the rules. He's telling us to do that. So that's also including the rules of the law or the law of the land or asking because I was tired and I didn't want to study for my test. Can I take it later? Then I'm not being responsible as a human being. Yes, because <laughs> there's two kingdoms. <laughs> you know, um, many people will read this, Margot, and say, this is anti what we call antinomianism, anti-law. Do whatever you want. Total chaos. Because if you operate this way and you believe in grace like this, society can't function. And you know, that was the number one 
still is criticism of Martin Luther. If he gets his way, there'll be chaos, there'll be anarchy, society will completely collapse. This is what Erasmus tells Luther in their big debate about the bondage of the Romans. So, so is Jesus that doing that? Um, I think we can see in other places he's he you know upholds the law. He you know he doesn't throw out the Ten Commandments. He says not a, any of it's going to pass away. But we get these two two words, um, and I think. <clears throat> It's, I'm going to say it this way. I think if you're going to live in the law, this is Jesus takes it to the far extent. If you're going to base your life in law, then so my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother in your heart. If you want to stand on, <laughs> base your salvation on the law, then there it is. You do that, you're good. Now, what as a pastor for 35 years or thereabouts, I, you know, this has been one of the hardest struggles for parishioners to forgive other people. And then it's hard for us to forgive other people who won't forgive. And forgive for not forgiving, for forgiving not. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the from your heart part. Is... The from your heart. I mean, because my my heart is, uh, you know. So so this so is Jesus preaching the law or the gospel here? He's preaching the law. He better be. Mm -hmm. And so, if you want to go on the law alone, then this is a, this is it. And see, Peter is doing that. He's mm -hmm. he's thinking law. He's thinking just a little mercy with the law. But Jesus is saying, okay, then boom. And I think at this point, even though Matthew doesn't tell us, Peter's got to be, I'm toast. <laughs> you know? That's why we need Jesus. There you go. Because the Heavenly Father is going to do this. Right. So you need Jesus because... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. right. Up. That's exactly right. That's exactly but we, right. But don't we also uh, need to have an idea of what, like what we're talking about with forgiveness, because people have a sense of what is needed for forgiveness. I can think of a family situation where one party just had conditions. You, did, you didn't meet this condition. You didn't say I'm sorry first or whatever, you know, or these different things. So we all have different ideas about what forgiveness means. And I think the, I, the word release is perfect. You can release something. That doesn't mean you've got to run right up to that person and say, oh, I forgive you. It, it does mean that you've released that in your heart. And the Jews have a great expression. I really love this one. Go live your life and be well. So to the person who, who did the offense or whatever, go ahead, live your life. You know, stop bugging people. <laughs> so when, when we see those actions and behaviors, the behaviors go along with what? What do we have to do, you know, to just live your life and be well? And if you really say that to somebody in your heart, okay, it's released. You know, go ahead, you know. Go live your life. Live well. I think, yeah, I think that clearly as Jesus is talking to his future church, he's very serious about binding and loosing and in particular loosing sins. That he knows his community, if it's going to thrive and flourish, is going to need to be generous and forgiving just like god has been forgiving that's for sure i think we can't get around that fortunately in addition to giving the church instruction he's also showing peter that he's down the wrong road because peter is what he's keeping score no keeping score 
Yeah. And the like king. 490 times. Right? Yeah, right. right. <clears throat> no keeping score. Um, you, and then then here's the, the ultimate thing. Because this, I wonder, where is the gospel in this? You know, so I, and this theologian that I like to listen to, among many others. By the way, have you um, listened to Sarah and Paul Hinlicky's podcast called Queen of the Sciences? Mm -hmm. You've got to oh, okay. get this. This is a, um, she, Paul Hinlicky Hin Hin is a great Lutheran. He's like NALC. Uh, but not, he's different than like Stephen Paulson. And anyway, but he, uh, he's fantastic. And his daughter is also a pastor and they have a conversation about all kinds of great topics. And, and you would absolutely love that on it. Uh, no, but she's been on, you know, the crossover she's been on, um, but it's a separate thing altogether. So anyway, um, but anyway, like somebody like Paulson will say, um, parables are always law anytime jesus teaches a parable get ready you're in trouble <laughs> and you know I think he's right for the most part when i think about the parables but underneath in there i think is gospel somewhere because what who are we we are the person that had billions of dollars of debt that we could never pay off we are this person and if we are grounded in that, you know, if, and this is, this is, I think, the protection against um, hip, hypocrisy and, and fair, being kind of pharisaical. Um, if we are grounded in the fact that our sitting in these pews, our presence in the body of Christ, in the community of Christ, is only because we've had billions of dollars of debt forgiven that we could never take care of. If we stay grounded in that, then maybe the forgiveness is gonna flow out of us a little better. Because I wanna know, Cindy, going back to your zeroing in on that phrase is perfect. How can I be somebody that can forgive from my heart? And I found that I can't do it by just knowing I'm supposed to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like the law yes. demands that I do that, but it can't help me do it. <laughs> That's when the spirit comes. There you go. Because the spirit is the nudger and nudges us to say, wait a minute, you know, in a gentle way, you're still bitter about this. Yeah. So the spirit yeah. convicts us, uh -huh. but then even more so, through the word, the spirit makes us into that person. Yeah. Because like when I can't forgive somebody, I have to just pray. Yeah. Like, Lord, I cannot let this go. I'm so angry, you know. Um, you know, <laughs> and it's silly. Some of the things we we just sometimes don't realize. So sometimes the Holy Spirit comes in and goes, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of had this thing with my coach in <laughs> high school baseball plus his heart, and I won't mention the name, but anyway, there was some conflict my, between my junior and senior year. I'd done really well my ju junior year, and I, I knew I wasn't going to play professional baseball at that point. You know, you wake up at some point, you know, and you go, I, yeah, I, I faced a couple 98-mile fastballs, and I really didn't even see them, so, you know, but, but you know, so, you know, you know you're not going to do that, but, but I was like, well, I love baseball, but it's a huge commitment and I need some more scholarship money. And I was like, I had done really well my junior year. So I, um, and anyway, long story short, I got told some mistruths and false truths. And, and any, anyway, so it was a hurtful end and I decided not to play baseball. No one asked me why the president of the school who, you know, I would, you know, I was like, why isn't Bill Crabtree, you know, cause I was in campus ministry at that point. No one, cared no one and so I was like bitter about that <laughs> for a long time although it was truly the best thing that ever happened to me because I actually studied and got straight A's for the first time in my life and I wasn't playing I wasn't playing baseball which you know two a double header on Saturday practices every day and two some games uh, every week I mean it was like when do you sit? but anyway so it was a blessing but I was like bug but it was my ego that was yeah. hurt you know ultimately um 
And I realized when I talk about this, I gotta let this go, you know? I mean, come on, that's life. I mean, mm -hmm. the coach had lots of money to give away and he wanted to give it to the junior high players that were coming in that didn't know anything about anything. They just, he was building his program and, you know, that's, this is a big deal. But, you know, I had to let it go. So the Holy Spirit, like said, let it go, Bill. And and I think I let it go. <laughs> That's what I meant about releasing. I've released, I've released it, Sharon, but I, ever so often I grab it back. Like I fact, uh -oh. I just spent five minutes telling uh -oh. the story. You're in trouble. <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive me. See, I have to be. So, but the Holy Spirit, though, that's where not only does the Holy Spirit show us and nudge us, the Holy, through the word, and when we hear the gospel, we're made new. Mm -hmm. That's the Christ in us that can forgive because I can't, my old Adam can't do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I don't know if somebody's talking. Come on, but we yeah. set the 489th forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> no, only one more Finally, <laughs> <laughs> then I can take it back. Yeah, forgiveness. Yes. I, I yeah, it's like that. Nice. Yeah, and that's a beautiful play of that. I believe, help my unbelief, you know, I, I forgive, help my forgiveness, yeah. If you forgive them, is if you can pray for them to be blessed, mm. for their well-being, and yeah. it's going to come back, it, it gives you a better, more well-being too, if you can yeah. release it so that they, you know, what they hurt, they hurt you, yes, but if you can release it and wish them well, then you'll be blessed by that too. It's hard. It's not easy to do. Yeah. Please, God, make them a better person. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can pray that. I think you can pray that. <laughs> oh, well, sure. <laughs> please, God, please, God, make them better so it's not as hard to forgive them. Yeah. yeah, serious stuff, but yeah, it's good to, yeah. So last night we were talking about uh, one of the women was in this Bible study and she said, this has been the hardest Bible study. It's, it is convicting her. She just feels terrible. It's like, you know, I, I'm not doing enough for Jesus. I try and I'm not giving him enough time. I'm not... You know, and it's verses like this used in that convicting context that drive people to despair. I, you know, it was so upsetting to hear that. And I'm like, and I wanted to say, well, why are you in that study? Because it's certainly not life giving, you know, and it's, I suppose it's okay to be convicted. It's, what step you know, did she say? Was yeah, I'll was? have to, I can't remember exactly. Okay, what it is. so anyway, um, not Lutheran. Yeah, but, but see, what is in, so yeah. So she shared that, yeah. and this text is that much. This so what do you like what do you say to this? What say? Here's the mercy part. You know, this is there is gospel in here, and it's out of pity for him. Um, the master sees released him in the debt. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what does this person at Ladies Night Out need that she doesn't have? She needs the gospel. She needs the gospel. Carrie, what were you, you going to know? She needs the gospel. Absolutely. And she needs to know how to distinguish law and gospel. Yeah. I mean, that's a perfect example of when Luther says, if you can't, if you don't know how to distinguish the two words of God, law and gospel, you will read the Bible and you will either despair or become a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You'll think I'm doing everything, I've kept everything, which is not true, or you'll realize you can't do it, and it's just more weight, more weight, weight, and then you kind of guess I'm not good enough, or you think you are, you know, like, is you, that's yeah. the hypocritical side, so, but that, what she's getting is she's reading the Bible, and she's hearing law, but see, she's not realizing that that's moving her to the gospel. Because, yeah, if you don't have that. I mean, Matthew is a perfect example. I'm sorry. If Jesus, 
is it Jesus preaches the law big time. I mean, try and do what Jesus tells you to do in the Gospel of Matthew. I mean, do it. Go for it. I mean, you got to be one heck of an on-fire disciple. You won't, you don't have any coats because you continue to give it away. You know, you've forgiven everybody everything. You've given everybody all your possessions. You've prayed, you pray without, you know, and, and you're perfect like God, you know. So, um, and so many people, so many Christians, especially evangelicals, and that was Bible says, because they love the Lord. They love him, which is so cool. I love that in the new lives and in the PBFs and the grace points. I mean, there's this personal relationship with Jesus, which I love. And that's a part of my story and my journey. But then they just love him so much and they want to please him. And then they start realizing, gosh, just like this woman said, Kim, I, I, I don't do it. It's not enough. You know, I've told you many times about the, the person that goes to an even uh, to modern day evangelical church. Um, we're evangelicals, by the way. We can't give that up. But um, that said that, you know, his, the, the verse that haunts him the most is where Jesus says, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm and I'll spit you out of my mouth. And he's like, I don't ever want to be lukewarm. And man, so he's fighting so hard to be on fire. <laughs> Well, and I don't blame him, but he doesn't know the law gospel thing. Jesus preaches the law, but he is the gospel. And so I think this is a classic example that he's preaching that if Peter, if you want to keep score and go by the law, okay, this is what it looks like. You must forgive everyone from your heart or God will not forgive you. Sometimes okay. when there's a... Sometimes yeah, when ahead. there's... Sometimes when there's a verse that's read, and I'm very disturbed by it, I figure maybe I'm being um, taught something that I need to explore more. That I need yes. to figure out what's going on in my in my life that is um, affecting my irritation at that verse. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Margo. Absolutely. <laughs> um, if something's grinding on you, if something's like. Um, then that's a, a good chance not to ignore it, but jump into it. Yeah, very true. What is, Cindy, I'm going back to what you said. In, in John, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. You show righteousness and something else. Um so anyway, that's yeah. I, I thought about that when you were saying, talking about the Holy Spirit. Of another another thing about freedom. Yes. Okay. And good. There's a passage that is I, I've had it memorized, but I you shall be free indeed. What? Where is that? That's John eight, I think thirty one, something like oh, that. Wow. <laughs> hey, you know it's the Reformation text, but so don't give me too much. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, Jesus says that in John. I put it up there, John 8, 31. Uh, it's down at 36 there. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free. So what is that freedom? Yeah, what is what, what he says you've forgiveness that's and it peace. Right. and peace peace and peace. peace forgiveness because what are we and so what ultimately are we set free from in order to have you know buy that forgiveness and to have that peace that Margot's talking about let's go to another text it's our sins we've been set free from our sins right and okay, good, good, good. You guys are so good. 15. I want to go to like, four, I don't know, it's like 43, something uh, down here a little further. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. 
So why does sin have power? Because the law is there and we don't keep the law. Jesus is preaching the law. So the sting of death is sin, that we have death because of sin. The power of sin is the law. So what do we really need to be set free from in this trio? We need to be set free from the law. In this respect, not, not going back to chaos, but in being righteous before God, we need to be set free from the law. Because the law condemns. The law says do, and we don't. The law says should, and we, you know, shouldn't. And and so we need to be set free from that. But Jesus is preaching to Peter, who's still in the world of the law. He's not thinking about that. He's going to bring Peter forgiveness. He's going to bring him the gospel. But right now, he's got to get him out of it. So he just ups the ante to the ultimate extent. So our freedom, Cindy, you know, is being set free from the accusation of the law. The law, of course, is good and beautiful and wonderful, but it accuses us. And so um, when I, I don't know about everybody else, but when I say here, unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart and really mean it, there's trapped. You're 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 trapped. And in the law, you are. You got no way out. And told Jesus. Yeah. That's a beautiful sin. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 You're trapped. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And the world is trapped. And people are trapped. They don't know it. But th whether they think it, whether they they probably don't today believe necessarily believe in the Mosaic law, although the Ten Commandments is still kind of somewhat <laughs> um, respected. You know, we don't like to steal. We know stealing is wrong and murdering is wrong. And, you know, we, but still, most people have live in the burden of the law, whether it's what their peers think of them or, you know, <laughs> whether you have the right kind of car in your garage or, yeah. There's some really interesting, I, I can't, you know, I've read about people forgiving other people, and they've, it's been in the news and stuff like yeah. that, some incredible forgiveness that they've allowed, they've said to the person that has whatever it, they've done to them, and they said, no, I forgave them. Yeah, let's talk about that. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. I, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 You know, certain things, you know, like um, maybe during, you know, the world war or during wars or something like that. And it just, it's amazing to me, but it's so peaceful, you know, when you hear about that. And the person that gets forgiven is like, you know, amazed that that can, you know, even happen. Now that's another spirit thing. Yeah. 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 And that um long story short or short story long about how I met Scott, but one of the um he he was supporting this group in Washington to um get rid of the death penalty. Mm -hmm. And um he took me on a date to a speaker. Oh great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um so it was this group that was working to eliminate the death penalty and the speaker was this uh, brother of a woman who was killed by Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, and he oh, was working yeah. against the death penalty. He didn't want Ted Kaczynski, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean I almost left because at the time my convictions were really different. Right. And <laughs> yeah, who are you? What are you? What are you doing? But um, hey, this, <laughs> that's just yeah. too great that he took you on that. But yeah, yeah. again, again I, I know I just I can totally see Scott doing that. But um, but also yeah. So how does somebody who's lost a family member, yeah. in one sense, forgive yeah. Ted Kavinsky yeah. for doing this? Doesn't justice? get mixed up with all of this too well well for sure that's again that's the civil world and there needs to be justice so the point isn't so much the death penalty or not you can debate that but but there there are other examples of what cindy mentioned that's a good one um what about south africa 
where um, Desmond Tutu, um, you know, and others sponsored the reconciliation project where, you know, these um, Afrikaner prison guards who beat up these people in jail and took money and possessions and everything, they were brought together and, and they, you know, there was repentance and forgiveness. It was really intentional. And these, you know, African, um, not African cheapers, Bill, um, South African um, folks were, were forgiving their white, you know, apartheid, you know, dealing people. Amazing. The manual nine that were killed by the kid that, you know, was, you know, doing it because they were black and all this. Um, they've been very vocal that they forgive him for killing their pastor and killing, you know, um, so it goes on and on. I had uh, a parishioner in my first congregation who was murdered um, by someone in his family, uh, like a nephew. And, you know, that family wrestled with how do we forgive and, and kind of did that. Now, the person, Sharon, as far as justice goes, that person's in jail for the rest of their life. But nonetheless, you know, there, there's there's um, you, many stories like that yeah. where you go, this this is beyond human. Uh, Corey Ten Boom, I think. Oh, yes. Isn't there a story about yeah. her meeting a prison guard and she talks about how, oh, how hard that, you know, and the, so... Um, Anyway, you know, I, that's a Holy Spirit thing. That's beyond our mm. our ability for sure. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I feel like we're we're never going to reach perfection on any of the, <laughs> these things while we're on this earth. And I know after uh, when Bert came home from his AC-130 gunship things, and that year, uh, it took a while, but he wouldn't really talk much about it. But he did, he's mentioned how, when they were gunning and destroying the enemy on the ground, that uh, this was these were lives that were being taken. Mm. And he was very much aware that a lot of these guys, they could see from the infrared that they were some of them were chained to the trucks, but they still had to go in and get rid of them because our other guys were being attacked, all that. Well, that's the warfare thing. But right. he had a sense of, of feeling badly for yes. the effects of what they had to do. And that didn't stop them from doing their job and doing the right parts of it and doing it really well on special forces. Right, right. Um, but I think a lot of our, uh, a lot of our Vietnam guys, uh, when they came back, they were viewed many times from the so-called wrong ideas of justice by being, uh, attacked and and put down and and there were hateful things you know done to the vets coming back and so that we went through a terrible era era of of all of that for those of us who were living it at the time mm -hmm. yeah. and so the forgiveness part has kind of been grabbed <laughs> by the politicians too to put themselves out making themselves look like they're the champions of everything you know, from all sides, but forgiveness just goes so huge and goes to so many areas of our lives that are, we really don't ever get to address. And so we need Christ and we yeah. need that gospel. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And, and, you know, folks like Bert, um, our veterans, whether um, need two things, they need a distinguishing between the two kingdoms. Right. That when I'm doing my job as a soldier, that is a moral thing. Of course, then it enters into the morality of the war and all that, but that gets complicated and difficult. But, you know, it, it, you got to separate those two kingdoms. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and, and then, but then they also need forgiveness, like you mentioned. Um, yeah, I, I did my best. I mean, you think about uh, 
Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who tried to assassinate Hitler. You know, he was a Lutheran pastor. Well, he knew that was wrong, but it was also wrong not to do it. So we live in ethical dilemmas. And so, you know, yeah, you have to take life as a soldier, and that's wrong in a certain sense, but not doing your job as a soldier would be wrong too, and more people would die. And so you're caught in these ethical dilemmas. And so we do need forgiveness and grace. And that is where. But remember, like I get frustrated that people get canceled today, whether it be a returning soldier from Vietnam, and that was very tragic because, of course, it was all inflamed by some of the real excesses that our soldiers did in Vietnam. I mean, it was a horrible situation. So, um, you know, and so, but when soldiers came back and were called baby killers and all these things that they were called, you know, it's very, very sad. But that our culture only has the law. So our culture is going to cancel people, whatever norm there is, whether it's a liberal norm or conservative norm, our culture is going to cancel you if you break it. So whoever's in control of the norm, that's what's going to happen. So that is another reason why it, the kingdom of heaven is in your midst. Jesus has come to bring a whole new reality. And it would be nice if some of that leaked out into our culture and there was some grace and forgiveness and there is sometimes um if we could carry our our norms more gracefully than we do with especially with people who don't share in the conviction about those norms um but but yeah i mean the the world doesn't have this <laughs> it has it has just has the law now they might be merciful with the law but they're still the law here we have a whole new reality where we're set free from that and yeah yeah you guys i hope people listen to this bible study because this is some serious incredible stuff right here i mean if people could get this they can be set free no they can be set free all right good what else on this passage um should we look at the Genesis real quick? Yeah. Let's see, what is it? Genesis uh, 45. Genesis what? 50. 50. Verse. Okay. Okay. Pastor, can I just ask this, this whole section on Genesis, I mean, on uh, Matthew 18. Yeah. It starts with that question from the disciples, who is the greatest, is the greatest? of heaven? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Again, because law is who's best, who's on top, who's the king of the hill or queen of the hill. You know, that's right. That's it all. When it chapter 18 is beautifully constructed <laughs> by St. Matthew. So, yeah. Um, so, does anybody got the actual verses? 15 through 21. 15 through 21. Okay. So, um, this is the, so yeah, Kim, were you going to say more? No, no. no that, it I just, just think that's a, It just frames it yeah. perfectly. You got on one end of the chapter, who's the greatest, then Peter, how many times? <laughs> how many times do I forget? So it's, you know, those are all law questions. How many and times and who and who's the great? Too. And they're all disciple you questions. Know, yeah. so, I mean, part of me says, yeah, that's okay to ask that question. I mean, you're trying, you're learning. You're in a learning, learning thing. I wrote down uh, forgiveness takes um what was it uh practice mm -hmm. you know it just it's, it's, a, one of those it's a journey yeah it's a journey and yeah we learn more and more each day about yeah. how to do that yeah um okay i know some of our party meal folks have to sneak out go for it thank you for lunch today mm -hmm. um so you're, I, most of you may be familiar with, I'm assuming you're familiar with mm -hmm. Joseph's story. This is after he's been sold. And the one African-American preacher I loved uh, wasn't Gardner Taylor. It was another. He said, you tell this Joseph story by a series of ups and downs. 
Oh. Now he was up in the favor of his father who gave him this coat of many colors. And mm -hmm. but that upset his brothers and they threw him down into the pit. Mm -hmm. And then they sold him up to slavery in Egypt, where he then prospered as, you know, a servant of, mm -hmm. but then Potiphar's wife, you know, <laughs> wanted to do some stuff with him and he wouldn't do it. And so she frames him and he gets thrown down in the prison um, where he then hears about this dream of the servant of the Pharaoh. And, and then that servant gets let out and tells the Pharaoh, this guy knows how to, you know, interpret dreams. And so he's, and then he tells the Pharaoh the dream. And so he's lifted up, you know, <laughs> now in control of all of Egypt. And so all of this is happening. And meanwhile, there's a famine that he had heard about in the dream. And now his, his family come that threw him into the pit and told their dad that he was dead, that wild animals killed him. So, you know, I mean, if if there was ever a time to say, gotcha, you know, and he kind of does because he sends them back. They don't recognize him at first and stuff. And, you know, with all that Egyptian makeup and, you know, <laughs> um, it's been a long time. So they don't recognize him. And so this is when Joseph's brother saw their father was dead. They said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did to him. Okay, so they're admitting that at least. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they're not sorry. We don't. So, so they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this commandment before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. Mm -hmm. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when he spoke to them, to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, do not fear, for I am, am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So, yeah. Did Joseph really, or did uh, Isaac really say that, or did the brother just say he said that? I don't know. <laughs> but I was pretty sure. I think he did, but I'm a, <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, and are, do they really mean it, or are they just, uh, you know, protecting their... Are they doing it from the heart? Yeah, are they doing it from their heart? Um, now, we do get that Joseph wept when they spoke, and his brothers came also and fell before him and said, behold, we are your servants. So Joseph weeps, you know, and so it's, it's you know, again, Luther and his commentary on this, you know, he says this is the greatest absolute, you know, like, um, and Isaac is giving Joseph the commission to unbind and set free. Um, but yeah, there's some ambiguity here, Ross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not on the part of Joseph so much. I think Joseph weeps, you know, and he recognizes that, you know, as it turns out what you meant for evil, God, you know, worked for good. Well, the, the whole area would have starved to death. Exactly. They had the story all right. Exactly. I love, I love this story. One reason is that we see how God makes... You could say, well, God had this exact plan set forth, and maybe he even hardened the, you know, the brothers' hearts so they would do this. So, and, you know, and that's fine. Um, in fact, maybe that's the, the best way to look at this, because, you know, we think about God's sovereignty on that regard. But also, I think God always brings life out of death and, and, and good things out of crisis. And so he's, he's doing that here. Um, Oh, he's down in the pit and he throws him in the slavery. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, but even behind that, even behind all the human decisions, God is there, you know, working it out. And we just have to kind of trust, I guess, in that sovereignty. But, um, you know, it's easier to do that when I have God's promise, that's for sure. But, and not just my own intellect trying to figure it out. But, um, but yeah, um, 
he so the forgiveness is he provides for them and their little ones so it's a concrete i i don't know that he says i forgive you but <laughs> he he doesn't you know wipe them out he 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 does forgive them um i know I some people wrestle with that please margo i sometimes have time have a hard time with people saying that when something happens like to joseph like that well it was all god's will yeah and you know as i share with you the thing of my daughter going blind at the age of 52 you know how can that be god's will it's what she does with it now it's what matters but god never never would have wanted someone to have to go through that yeah 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 i i think margo that's absolutely our struggle with that you know pushing the sovereignty of god where god is the actor between but behind everything that happens whether it's when we get cancer or we lose our sight or a child dies or you know um you know i i think we need to be extremely careful in those situations with our language about that um i you know and it's kind of venturing anyway into an area that we're not supposed to venture i mean so for me i have god's I'm going to hang on to what God has promised that God is gracious and loving and kind and for, you know, that this is who God is. So, um, for in whatever challenges I'm going to face, and I kind of let go of the questions of, you know, did God cause it? Did um, God certainly allowed it to happen? Is, you know, as one, one way of coming at those is there's God's uh, permissive will. He allowed it to happen and God's direct will, like he, you know, caused something to happen. And some people have wrestled with this question that way. And there may be some help to that. But no, I I'm with you. Uh, even while then we would see that maybe God can bring blessings from whatever challenges that we experience, you know, um, like what, you know, jo uh, Joni. Eckerman. Eckerman. Uh, Erickson Todd. Erickson Todd. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who, you know, yeah. dove off the dock and fractured her spine and was mm -hmm. paraplegic. And, you know, she said, I had to stop asking why this happened and what, and start just like you said, Margo, um, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's, and you look at what she's done through all of this but that's god working good out of something that's bad that was not good and that's and i think it's very unhelpful for us to say well god caused this so that you could i think that's i uh, just that's area i don't want to go <laughs> isn't it funny though that that's the god that most people seem to hang on to yes mm -hmm. the the sovereignty god the god that's but, controlling yeah, everything god, yeah. Because it's exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm not arguments that. about that. It's like, no, I don't believe in that God. Yeah. Whatever God you're talking about, if that, that's what they like, think about. They, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not not believe instead of like yeah. listening to you and right. you know you're going to throw yourself on this merciful God. Right. And that is so life giving. But I, I'm not going to. Yeah. The, and and what they have, um, Kim, is God outside the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Outside of His Word of yeah, promise. Yeah, the law, God of the law. And that's where you get to. You either have a God that's powerless to do anything, or a God who's mean and horrible, who causes all these bad things to happen. And but unless you have the self revelation of God yeah. and Christ to set you, there's a difference between your earthly life and your eternal life. Sure. And what happens in your earthly life in the long run? It's relative compared yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. And that is helpful to have that promise as well. But no matter, you yeah. know, what is um yeah. This almighty fortress in this green and I'll forget. Yeah, yeah. No, Kim, I think that and Margo, thanks for bringing that up because that gets us um um right to the the question of what it looks like to have God within the gospel and the promise and not. And so when we look at these tragedies or these horrible things that happen, 
in this life, if we don't have the gospel, then we're stuck with either, you know, God is kind of not very powerful or God is, you know, mm -hmm. causing, yeah. you know, bad things. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we always want to be careful, precise with Paul's language, because Paul says God can work for good all things for those who love the Lord. But he didn't say God caused all things. Yeah. yeah. And and for us, this causal thing is it's it's a struggle. Yeah. Um, so and understandably, I don't want to think that you know God caused all kinds of tragedies in the world. God doesn't do that. God's not the author of that. That but you know, God can work good from them. And I think that's, you know, a key. What is, uh, let's see. Oh, thought I had the right. I thought I had the right spot. I'm still not read. The, what's the, it's the last line of the last of a mighty fortress. 228, not 329. I've forgotten. I used to have these memorized by heart. Um, so, um, the last so verse, we'll forgive you 70 times, please. Thank you. <laughs> the last, the, I've always struggled. Um, let's see, if they, if, if they take our house, goods, fame, child, or spouse, wrench our life away. So, there you go, Ross. You know, this is to life away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever yeah. and ever. So that's like that's what you made me think of. You know, yeah. um, bad things happening to us in this life. Yeah. You know, we have to keep that relative. The other thing, um, when it's he's taught the, the verse before when he's talking about the devil and how the devil's working, he is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him well what is that word it's jesus and and the proclamation of the gospel subdues him and that's that's what we cling to you know amidst all all these challenges that come and so yeah what you meant for good god bad god meant for good god is at work even though we don't in with and under you know um we gotta let go of trying to figure that out almost really you know like Joni I got I had to realize stop asking why <laughs> and what am I going to do about it that's 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 the area that we can do something the the cause we kind of got to let that go yeah <clears throat> easier said than done no so Margo thank you so much for bringing up your daughter's experience there yeah that is easier said than done it's a long process yes. long process. yes it's Yes, it four is. Years, four years. Yeah, I can. I cannot imagine. Well, she yeah. she is, she is doing extremely well, but it is a different life. Mm. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. I like this uh, verse twenty four. And Joseph said to his brothers, "I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up." out of this land to the land he promised on earth to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So there's God, he, he's declaring God is going to be here because there's a cosmic battle going on between God and his enemy. And that's being played out on our earth. And yet he's also stressing the promises. So that's a, like a declaration. Yeah, absolutely. And he's stressing that god will be faithful to this promise but how long will it right. take for him to be that it's going to take 400 years because yeah. they're going to be they're going to be in egypt you know the pharaoh is going to forget joseph and they're going to be enslaved and so it doesn't look like it's true but that's where we have to hang on to his promise right that's, that's true well some messianic jews that i know pretty well um they see the promise as being the uh, final act of God's triumph over everything. It's not just, oh, I'm going to be back in the Holy Land. I mean, they, they kind of look at that and think, well, that's an interesting thing because it seems like they're back in the Holy Land after all these centuries. You know, they'll look at things like that, but it's almost like when they do, it's a sense of 
renewing the sense, yeah, the promise is still there. And it's going to, and it's still there for all of us. Absolutely. And this is where Christians are, and whether messianic, you know, Jewish Christians or whatever stripe, um, are is not in flesh and we we believe that our hope our salvation is yet to come when christ comes and the dead are raised and all is made new and the new heaven and the earth new earth come and it, it's going to be something beyond this world that's my problem i agree I, if that's what messianic jews believe that's actually cool because i i really wrestle with people believing that the modern day israel is the biblical israel um i'm glad it's there I'm, it needs to be there. It that what happened in the Holocaust should never happen again, and the Jewish people should have a home where they're protected because obviously the world is still, you know, <laughs> um, you know, there's this force again. All of that's true, but I, I, I get really worried when you know we're buying furniture for the new temple so we can build the new temple so that Armageddon can happen and. You know, and this is a real thing. Billions of dollars are being put into this. This oh, is, um, it's called Christian Zionism. And I know mm -hmm. that our hope is not in the earthly kingdom. It is in the new heaven and the new earth. And so we, we live in that in-between time, Sharon. We're waiting yeah. for the promise. We yeah. have the promise, but we're waiting for it to be fulfilled. And the, you, know, you know, going through the old, into the Old Testament and the, the, uh, finally, when they do get to Jerusalem and they have King David and all that, yes, here now they're ruling that part of the world, but it, it all crashes and then it kind of shows up again and Jesus is there walking around yeah. and dealing with the Romans, crashes again, and they see this rise as just another grander, glo more globally recognized thing going on that will not be the final Israel. Right. Well, and Jonathan, sorry, I know we got to quit, but Jonathan actually uh, helped us a few weeks ago um, when he talked about how Hitler, you know, talked about the first reign or Reich, and then the second reign with the Prussian reign or Reich, and then Hitler said, we're the third, the, we're the kingdom come, you know, and look what happens when you merge that with an earthly kingdom it, a lot of bad things can happen um so yeah all right well the great study let me close this thank you god for this conversation in your word and for um the the word of jesus that drives us to what he did for us in freeing us from the law and so thank you for your forgiveness that's beyond measure and may we have your spirit and be made new people that we can forgive and so indeed forgive us um, um, for our struggle to forgive and um, make us new so that we can and we pray this in jesus name amen and forgive us for our forgive our I forget. Oh, I forget. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Margo. Bye. Thank you. It's funny. Thank you.